I'm about to show you what Air France A350-900 Premium Economy is like. Not only are you going to hear me say some not so nice things about it, you're also going to hear me gush like a fire hose about how great it is. It all comes down to seat choice. As you're about to see, I chose incorrectly. Welcome to the Chicago O'Hare International Airport. More specifically, this is the people mover that stops at all terminals. I'm headed over to Terminal 5, which is the international terminal, in order to set off on one heck of a fun journey today. Air France A350-900 Premium Economy from Chicago to Paris qualifies as fun, right? <laughs> well, I've heard mixed reviews. No matter, I'm down to try anything at least once, and that's why I'm quite looking forward to this. I'm so eager, as a matter of fact, that I've shown up at 11 a.m. for what is scheduled to be a 5 p.m. departure time. Spoiler alert, 5 p.m. was optimistic, but <laughs> they tried their best. Anyway, it's mid-January, and freezing cold here in both Chicago and Paris, so I'm hoping for a somewhat light load on the flight over tonight. This is the low season for travel between the US and Europe, and if my assumptions are correct, there will be a lot of empty seats and plenty of room to spread out. Spoiler alert number two, my assumptions were wrong, as always. Terminal 5 here at O'Hare is a weird place. It's basically Chicago's international gateway to the world, yet it's the most sterile terminal here at the entire airport. Basically what I'm trying to say is that this is not the place you want to hang out for hours on end. Or, more specifically, five and a half hours. Walking from one end to the other takes approximately 20 minutes. You can drag that out to 30 by walking at a slower pace, but once the boredom sets in, and it will, Power naps are essentially your only hope for killing time. Yeah, it's a little late, but I can't think of a better feeling in the world than watching my plane arrive after spending nearly the entire day, plus an additional 45 minutes, <laughs> waiting for it. So yeah, this A350-900 is my ride to Paris tonight. They didn't give a reason for the delayed arrival other than technical reasons, but no matter, I'm just glad it's here. This is also my first time seeing an Air France A350 up close, and I'd like to take this moment to take back nearly every negative thing that I've said about this overly simplistic livery in the past. This looks really good, actually. And you know what? It even helped me to appreciate the overly simplistic design of Terminal 5 just a little bit more. Anyway, Gate M20 is where this flight is going to be departing from, and they're estimating a 45-minute delay still, but no biggie. I've got a four-hour layover in Paris, so I'm in a fortunate position to absorb any further delays, should they happen. Not that I want any, but still. Air France premium economy passengers get Zone 2 Sky Priority Access, which is essentially the second major boarding group. Obviously, you gotta fly first class if you want to be the first on the plane. Zone 2 or not, the jet bridge was already clogged up real good by the time I got there, which is exactly the moment where I realized that my assumptions about this being a fairly light passenger load were completely wrong. Eleven h is my seat for the evening which is an aisle seat in the middle section of the second row of the premium economy cabin. This looks pretty good, doesn't it? I was actually quite happy with the amount of legroom at this particular moment, but as you'll see very soon, well, <laughs> you'll see. First impressions were pretty good, no surprises so far, and based on what I'm seeing, I was feeling fairly certain that I made a good choice. But as I said, there's a lot that I didn't know yet. The flip-down footrest felt pretty good, and this right here is the second of two USB-A power outlets in this seat. The headphones are... technically headphones, I guess. Nothing fancy. And it was nice to see these free bottles of water as well. I most definitely am going to take advantage of that. Something else I'm going to take advantage of? 
This very thick blanket. So, yeah. Remember what I was saying earlier about hearing mixed reviews about these seats? I honestly wasn't even seeing anything negative yet. They seemed spacious, well-featured, with large video screens, and fairly good-looking as well. I just had no idea what was to come. By the way, premium economy here on the Air France A350-900 is a fairly condensed 242 layout. It's also filthy. Maybe that's what all the fuss was about? They did come by with amenity kits, which only confused me even more. They told me this was going to be mediocre, but so far, I'm not seeing all that much to wrinkle my nose at. Okay, yeah, we are pushing off the gate a little late, but if the guy in 10J doesn't seem to be all that concerned about it, why should I? Things just keep getting better. The current time is 6.11 p.m., which puts us exactly 41 minutes behind schedule so far. How exactly is that a good thing? Well, the captain just announced an estimated flying time of 7 hours and 2 minutes, which is almost an hour less than what was scheduled. Yep, we're going to be riding the jet stream all the way across the Atlantic tonight, which will put us into Paris early despite this delayed departure. Is it too early to tell all the Air France A350 premium economy haters to get bent yet? Is a Rolls-Royce Trent-powered A350 not the best sounding airplane ever? The answer, if you didn't know, is yes. An added bonus of this is that it'll be a nice background soundtrack to the in-flight entertainment portion of... Ooh. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, that sucks. But it's okay. I can deal with this. <laughs> or not. Holy crap. This is going to be a bit of a challenge, I think. You know, it was at this very moment that I fully understood why these premium economy seats get so much flack. The seat recline is ridiculous. Of course, it's great if you're the person doing the reclining, but not so much if you're on the receiving end of it. It's hard to tell in these video clips, but the screen is less than a foot away from my face, and, well, let's just say that I'm seeing individual pixels. Speaking of pixels, the remote control features a digital display, which is something I've never seen. It's pretty cool. I'm also liking the ability to pair my AirPods to the in-flight entertainment system via Bluetooth because, well, you've already seen the headphones, and I can tell you from first-hand experience that you're probably going to want to use your own. If you do end up using these, it's imperative that you plug it into the audio jack before the person in front of you reclines their seat. Otherwise, you'll never find the hole. So, what's the verdict so far? These seats make an excellent first impression, but I think it's turning out to be a little more cozy than I'd like. Check this out. There's actually a retractable leg rest in these seats. I didn't realize that at first, and uh, yeah, it's just kind of nice. And for anyone wondering, no, there were no hot towels before the meal service. So yeah, it's time to eat. Maybe. Seems like there's a slight issue with the tray table here. <laughs> there we go. Dinner choices tonight are a vegetarian pumpkin dish or veal. The guy in front of me isn't interested in either, it seems. Oh well. He's totally missing out because this seems to be a fairly decent tray of food by current day premium economy standards. I had to go with the veal, mostly because it seemed like the French thing to do, and so far, this looks pretty good. They didn't provide any menus, so I can't tell you what all this stuff is exactly, but at least it's on par with what I would expect for a long haul premium economy dinner service. And I assume this is the good stuff? <laughs> Probably not. At least I didn't have to worry about the guy in front of me slamming his seat back as I was pouring my drink. Whatever. Food quality was actually pretty decent. Rice is always a gamble in economy class meals, but I give this fairly high marks. They nailed it. Finally, to end this section, I'm curious. Would you have said anything to the guy in front of you who left his seat reclined all the way back during the meal service? I didn't say anything. 
but uh, shoulda, coulda, woulda, I guess. Now, don't get me wrong. The recline in these seats is excellent, just as long as you're in the bulkhead row with no one in front of you. Remember, there are only three rows of seats in Air France A350-900 Premium Economy, so if you don't want anyone lying in your lap for the entire flight, choose row 10, which is the bulkhead row. Those of us here in rows 11 and 12 basically have two choices. We can pretend that being reclined into so severely isn't annoying, or we can sleep while presumably dreaming about sitting in row 10. Believe it or not, there are actually some premium amenities here in the lavatory. These perfumes and frilly soaps are kind of interesting, as is the illuminated magnification beer, which is probably the last thing I want on a long-haul international flight. I'll tell you what, though. It felt good to get up and stretch my legs a bit, as well as to have a quick look around. And you're not going to believe this, but it seems that the regular economy seats aren't all that much more cramped than premium economy. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I do know for a fact, however, that it felt great to get the blood flowing to my lower extremities again. It's not that I found the premium economy seats to be horribly uncomfortable or anything. They're plenty wide enough and reasonably soft in all the right places. I just don't like being pinned into my seat by the person in front of me, that's all. <laughs> Who cares if I didn't get any sleep? There's an hour and a half to go until we reach Paris, and it is time to eat. Actually, snacking is more like it. The contents of this box include a chocolate muffin, a miniature loaf of bread, some kind of yogurt smoothie drink, and orange juice. I'll admit it, the muffin was actually pretty good. Maybe a bit too crumbly for my liking, but tasty nonetheless. And for what it's worth, that's a pretty huge compliment considering my stance on messy food. Most of the time, anything that falls apart as soon as I bite into it is dead to me. But not today. I'm thinking that the crumbs actually made the orange juice taste a little better. I'm telling you, the bulkhead row, row 10, is the jam. But those of us here in the other seats, especially here in the center section, aren't exactly missing out though. At least we have a high-resolution video feed from two external cameras to enjoy, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyway, so now that this flight is just about over, there's a couple things I'd like to say about this experience. On one hand, everything about it, even the seat recline, was everything I would expect from a long-haul international premium economy product. The food was good, at least the dinner service was. In-flight entertainment was excellent, and the seat itself was feature-rich and comfortable. On the other hand, that aggressive seat recline comes at a cost. It's just too much in my opinion. I know, I'm probably going to get a bit of flack for saying that, but it's downright miserable when you're sitting behind someone who has gone full recline. I mean, the poor old lady sitting next to me couldn't even get out of her seat at one point during the flight because of it. So, knowing what I know now, would I do this again? Probably, but I think it'd have to be in the bulkhead row. If I couldn't get a bulkhead row seat, I'd probably choose Lufthansa or British Airways Premium Economy instead. I haven't tried KLM or Virgin Atlantic Premium Economy yet, but I have a hard time believing they could be worse than this. Anyway, that's it for me this time. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.